Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. This is going to be part two of the Eagle Library series and I will link in part one down below. In part two, in part one, we uh, set up the basics and we created a basic library component from scratch. Here in part two, I'm going to talk more about advanced features of uh, the uh, library tools and uh, some tricks on how to quickly and easily and better create uh, new parts. So let's get started. Uh, the part we're going to be making today is the Atmel ATA6560. It is a SO8 or SOIC8 package and this is a CAN transceiver. So first we want to make a new library and in part three I'm gonna add things to this library and I'm gonna create a more even more complicated part and show off some tools that I found but for this I'm gonna create a new library and I'm gonna save it for some reason Eagle always likes to create new things as untitled and I'm gonna put it into the same place I've been putting my other library Things and you could see the other libraries that I've created, and we're gonna call this Atmel because the the part in the component in part three is also gonna be an Atmel part. And go ahead and save that. So let's maximize that, and now we're going to go ahead and create the symbol. And this is going to be a new symbol. And this is going to be the the ATA and they forget the name 6560 6560 okay and go ahead and confirm create a new symbol whenever you type it in to the bar down there and the symbol doesn't exist it automatically assumes that you want to create a new symbol but it wants to verify that so now let's grab a pin and let's go ahead and figure out a good spot for the pin. That looks okay. Go ahead and put the pin down. And after I place the first pin, I want to go ahead and hit stop because I want to go into the pin and modify some things and then copy the pin. So let's go ahead and grab the info tool and open up the part. So the first thing that I wanted to modify and talk about is the visibility. This visible tab down here. What the visible pa uh, tab does is whenever the symbol is displayed in your in the schematic, it will either show you nothing as far as what the pin is called. It'll show you the pad name and that's the pad of the device that it's linked to it'll show you the pin name which is the name we're gonna give it here or it's gonna show you both for this part I want to change that to pin only now as far as Of the other thing I wanted to talk about, and we'll actually assign these to all of the pins, is the di pin direction. The pin direction is only used for the electrical rule check, which goes through your schematic and makes sure that electrically everything makes sense. The way it does this is you have a number of uh, number of things to choose from. NC is no connect in is an in pin out is an out pin and essentially this makes sure that in pins and out pins are connected the default one is input and output I don't remember what OC is off the top of my head but I will uh, place the complete list and descriptions of all of these in uh, down further in my blog Power is uh, for 
power and ground pins on a on like a processor pass is passive so like resistors or capacitors and whatnot would get this high z is high impedance so like tri-stated and supply is only used for supply things like powers and grounds but not on a processor these are completely separate you will most likely never have to use this so for now we're just going to leave it as io and go ahead and hit ok and now we want to use the copy tool and go ahead and copy this guy oops put two of them on top of each other oh there we go like that Good copy tool like that like that and then this is a SOIC so the let's just verify that the pins go counterclockwise starting at pin 1 and then all the way around so now we grab the copy tool again but now we want to rotate that around like that like that so now we want to rename these pins and we're going to follow the naming scheme in the data sheet which is txd gnd vcc rxd so the first thing that i want to do well the let's double check that the first pin is txd and instead of deleting the name what i'm going to do I'm going to type in the name TXD and then I'm going to insert an at sign. What this at sign does is it hides everything after, after it, including itself. And I will show you this in once we create the symbol and the device. I'll show you what this part actually looks like in the... A schemat in a schematic and uh, this is a uh, well this is a transmit pin so we want to set it to out and hit OK so now we want to go to move on to our next pin and this is the CC at the reason why we're putting this at sign in there is that when we go to link the package to the symbol it'll make it a lot easier because while you're viewing this part in the uh, device editor it will show you these numbers and it makes it a lot easier to work with so now this is the VCC pin. Oh, I'm sorry, GND. Always helps to double check. GND. And this is a power pin. Okay. This is the VCC pin. And this is also a power pin. Then this is RXD, and this is an out, like that, double check that, alright, now pin 8 is standby, STD, STBY, right, yep, STBY. Don't forget the at sign. This is a input. Okay. Now this is can high. And this is a IO. Go ahead and leave that alone. So this is can low. 
I'll double check that. I put in the infrasand, and this is also I.O. And then finally, this is the NSIL pin. NSIL, put in the ant. And just for this pin, I'm going to show you what it looks like if both are selected. And hit OK. So now the symbol looks a little messy right now. Let's clean it up a little bit. And I think just move sliding the pins out a little bit will help clear up a little bit of the confusion. Don't forget that everything after the at sign gets hidden whenever you actually view this in a schematic. So it'll look much better once we're actually in the schematic. And now we want to throw a wire around all of this to complete it hit stop and now go ahead and grab the text tool and we want to do name okay and place this on the names layer like that and we hit escape to back up a level and Value, OK. You place this on the values layer, like that. Hit the stop tool. And now we're all done. All we have to do is save. So now that the schematic symbol is created, we want to create the package. But as I mentioned previously, for the package, we're going to cheat a little bit. So now that the symbol is saved we can go ahead and close out of it and we can go to the libraries menu or you can go file open libraries and we want to go to the the ref package library this guy right here eagle actually has a fairly decent assortment of reference packages uh, go ahead and double click on that by reference packages there are lots of standard component packages and those component packages are in this library so go ahead and maximize that and we want to go to packages and we want to look for SOIC missed it there we go SOIC 8 and hit OK so let me zoom out a little bit. This is the SOIC standard package. So f the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and turn on all of the layers by hitting the All button and hit OK. Then, and this is this is kind of an it is idiosyncrasy of Eagle this is this is just the way you do it and that's how it works the first thing you do is you select the group tool and you highlight everything like that then you would think you would hit copy because you want to move this part out but no in this case you actually hit cut so there is actually no button for cut so you have to type it into the command bar here so you hit type in cut and hit enter once you hit enter you right click in the part and you go down to cut group as you can see the part didn't disappear like cut normally does for let's say microsoft word or something along those lines the part actually got stored in the clipboard so now that the part is in the clipboard we can go ahead and close out of the library and now we want to open our own library back up so we can go file open library and go ahead and navigate ourselves over to where our library is stored at well open now that our library is open we go ahead and create a new package by hitting package and typing in SOIC8 confirm that yes we want to create a new one and now you can either type out paste up here or there is a paste tool that we can hit 
and there we go this is our part and you want to go ahead and place the part directly over the origin because that makes the part generally easier to work with like that and now all you have to do is save it and we're all done see how nice and fast and easy that was so now that we have a symbol created and we have a package created now we want to make our device so go ahead and hit device and we want to make a new device and this is going to be the ATA 6560 let me double check that number because I oh 6560 I screwed up every time hit OK and confirm that we want to make a new device now go to the add tool and grab the 6560 symbol and place it so you always want to line it up with the origin because it makes the part easier to work with go ahead and hit the stop tool to deselect your part now we want to grab a new package and here's our SOIC 8 and hit O in this case we won't have we won't use any other variants so we're just going to leave the variant name blank hit OK now the package has that exclamation mark to let you know that it's not connected yet so go ahead and hit connect and this is where those pin numbers come in really nicely so if you look right here the pin numbers are the this prefix is the same for everything that really doesn't matter but it's these numbers at the end that tell you which pin is over here this is the part that that at sign really helps with so now I can grab one and that and hit connect grab two connect three connect four connect five six seven and finally eight and now all of the pins are connected and hit OK don't forget to add your prefix uh, chips generally have a prefix of U and hit OK and now go ahead and save our part so now let's actually use our part and see what the symbol looks like in a schematic go ahead and close out of our library open up a project I have a test project here that I've been playing with and this is my test project uh, the library might not necessarily be added by default so we want to use the use tool and select our library and hit open so now this will add the library to the add tool go ahead and grab the add tool perfect and let's scroll down to Atmel here's our library and here's our part and let's go ahead and hit OK and place our part uh, hit the stop tool and then let's zoom into it and examine it so as I mentioned before everything after the at symbol is hidden in the actual schematic so as you can see the pin names are very nicely laid out without overlapping on top of each other etc remember that one pin that I selected both so this is what that looks like the NSIL pin is pin 5 and it's displaying the number 5 for what the pin number it is everybody has a different preference as to what they want the parts to look like so it's up to you whether you want to display the pin the pad or both usually I like to display both because it shows me what it's going to look like it shows me that the pin uh, the pin names and the pin orientations so like I said I'm going to link in uh, part one down below I'm also going to post the uh, pin direction definitions which uh, I found on uh, MIT's website and uh, I'm also going to put together in the future part 
three of this video series and part three is going to go through showing you a very very complex part and some tools and tricks to help you put that part together thank you for watching and my name is igor vinograd and don't forget to visit my website uh, eapbg.com thank you